be taking a look at unused item descriptions in the files of Dark Souls 3 that are related to the lore and story of the game and interesting in general. So without further ado, let's go. First thing we have is the bridge key and this, the description for it, is one of the most interesting descriptions I've ever read. It reads, key to the inner part of the bridge, beyond the great bridge that couldn't possibly have been made by a human hand, hides a mystery that has yet to be discovered. Some say that the realm of God awaits, but others... Like, just wow, like, what is the, oh, sorry, where is this? Where is this gonna be located? Now, my take on it is this is gonna be a DLC area, but, like, let's say maybe, like, Dark Souls 2's DLC is gonna be an optional area in a DLC. But if it was the case, like, man, what is that area gonna look like? Like, just imagine where could we be going according to this description, like, just, I can't imagine it, really. Second we have is the Iron Seal of the Wolf, and it reads, A crest opening the way to Fort Faran, home to the undead corpse. Passed down to cursed undead warriors, the stench of death still lingers. Perhaps Freys of Venheim will have some use for it. Now it seems like that this item was cut very early on into the game's development, because we can see the names of the locations that it tells are not existent in game but are very similar to something that is already in game, which is Farron's Fort, I think this is Farron's Keep, the Undead Corpse, I think they are the Abyss Watchers, and Freys of Venheim, which I think right now he is Oberic of Venheim. Now my take on this is that there weren't supposed to be the three rituals, the towers that you have to remove the flame from them in the swamp, but it was the same concept as Dark Souls 1 where you had the crest of Artorias and you open the door with it and you go to the grave of Sir Artorias in the Darkroot Basin. I think the same thing would have been here that this door, you might give this crest to this phrase of Vinheim and he will open the door for you. But then they decided they want to take a new approach on it and in general it fits the theme of Artorias because all of Farron's keep is related to the Abyss and Odoseal, you can't deny that. Now there is also unused dialogue for Hawkwood where he actually says that he gives you a medallion that gives you access to the Undead Legion. Take a hear at this. You can make better use of this. A medallion to gain entry to the keep of the Undead Legion of Farron, Lords of Cinder in their own right. Now the next item we have is kind of a mess, to be honest. It is the pendant from Dark Souls 1, yes. Now, first thing, this item can be picked up. This item is mentioned in the Prima Games Guide, but this item is nowhere to be found in the game. Now, I don't know if they put it as a troll or like, but they put it in the guide, like, I don't know what is the meaning of this, but the description for it is actually the same as Dark Souls 1, where in the consoles it had the description of the Sunlight Medal, and here it is the same, but in the Prepare to Die edition they fixed the description to a proper one. But the funniest thing is that the pendant itself, the effect of the item is written, no effect, like, bluntly says no effect, like, it's just hilarious, honestly, but you don't don't know, maybe in Dark Souls 3 it does have an effect, we'll see. Next we have is Gwendolyn's finger, and it reads, Ruined finger of Dark Sun Gwendolyn, the young crossbreed girl loved her brother, of whom all that remains is this ruined finger. Even so, her love for him will never falter. Now the young crossbreed girl is talking about Yorshka, and there is actually an unused dialogue of Yorshka when you give her this finger, take a listen. Oh. This is my brother's finger, how it has thinned and withered. All oh, my thanks. I'm certain thou'st given my brother peace. Thou'st granted me my brother's touch as my thanks. Not as a captain, but as sister to the dark sun Gwendolyn. Next we have two unused souls. First is the soul of a wicked spirit, which reads, Soul of a male volant god that possessed a heroic king used to acquire a huge amount of souls or to make an offering at the training kiln. Now the word malevolent actually means having or showing a wish to do evil to others. And this is very interesting, like a malevolent god that possessed a heroic king. I like I wish we could have seen what this boss or enemy could have looked like. 
The other soul is the soul of the great bat and it reads soul of the great bat sealed away deep beneath the earth and the rest is the same as the previous one but it mentions the offering at the training kiln which is basically right now the transposition kiln which you give to Ludlith at Firelink Shrine to make boss weapons and spells. Next we have are the holy remains and it reads sinister vessel made from the skull of a noble king blazed on the altar within the catacombs but its origins are unclear. An ominous air emits from the chalice, gripping the hearts of those who peer at it as if determined to drag them to the world of the dead. Now this is very interesting as High Lord Walner himself was not supposed to be fought in the abyss itself because we can see in previous trailers that he is fought in a normal looking room and it seems like we should have acquired this item after beating him or we find it someplace and this is what makes us go to the earth of the boreal valley but now they changed it this is now used in the cutscene to be teleported to the ward of the dead as the description says to fight high lord walner Finally, we have the spirit Amethyst, and it reads, Online play item, purple crystal inhabited by spirits. Spirits sort to seek enemies from other worlds, conforming to the target's color. Can be used three times, then regenerated with the rest at a bonfire. What stuff is it that in the purple crystal resides? Perhaps cinders of undead, sacrificed to the bonfire. Or perhaps the vengeful spirits of those who fell to foes from distant worlds. Now this thing was actually a spell in Dark Souls 2 that you can use to know where the red phantom or the blue phantom was and this is also done automatically when you are an invader and then a blue comes to help the host he knows your location from this beam that gets out of the sky and it seems like this item was the same thing but as it says it could be used three times it's very interesting like why did they remove such a mechanic like it could be very good to be used in online play. So this wraps up this video today, I hope you all enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more Dark Souls 3 content and make sure also to check out my cut content playlist, I have a lot of other cut content videos, very interesting stuff, and yeah, I guess I'll see you later, bye bye.